Mental health problems such as depression and anxiety have been on the rise for decades, but we haven't been getting any better at treating these problems. The standard drugs that are prescribed are not very effective and often don't help at all. But there is hope on the horizon as the types of drugs called psychedelics promise to revolutionize the way we treat mental health problems. These drugs cause changes in perception, thought, and mood. And you might be a bit confused now and think, aren't psychedelics bad, as they do have a bad reputation as recreational drugs? But research has shown psychedelics are actually not addictive and are safe if taken under guidance by a trained therapist. Psychotherapy with psychedelics is proven to help patients suffering from various mental health issues, from anxiety and depression to alcohol and drug dependency, and it does that quickly and for a long time. This almost sounds too good to be true, so for my PhD project, I'm trying to understand what exactly these drugs do to the brain. One dominant theory is that they increase the brain's ability to change, both in terms of how it's built and how it works. Not being able to change and feeling stuck is a common thing in many mental health problems, so from that point of view, it makes sense that psychedelics could help. But what does science say? Psychedelics do change the structure of brain cells, the building blocks that make up the brain and our whole body. These changes enable the brain cells to connect and communicate more easily with other cells. What I wanted to know is does that change in brain cell structure also imply a change in brain function in generating thoughts and behaviors? As working in humans is limited by the illegal status of psychedelics, I work with mice to test if psychedelics make them more adaptable. What do I mean by that? We put a thirsty mouse in a box where it needs to make a series of choices to get a water reward. After a few weeks, the mouse learns the rules of what choices have what consequences to get the most rewards. But then I will suddenly change the rules. What the mouse needs to do now is adapt. It needs to change its choices to get the most rewards again. This is what I measure. How quickly was the mouse able to relearn the correct way of making choices? I found that weeks after receiving a psychedelic, mice learned the new rules faster than if they hadn't gotten the drug. But they not only learned faster, they learn differently. I used statistical models to figure out how animals learn what choices to make and found that mice normally only learn from the rewards they get, but they don't really pay attention when they miss out on a reward. But with a psychedelic, mice started learning from all those times when they didn't get a reward too. To recap, I determined that a single treatment with psychedelic changed the degree and manner of adaptability in healthy mice. These results are a step forward in understanding how psychedelics really work to ensure we can develop new, safe and effective treatments for mental health problems in the future.